The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. At 50, American. Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. And today, tomorrow, always. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, fine tobacco. Year after year, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last week Jack Benny fired his quartet, the sportsman. A few minutes later, his sponsor, Mr. Riggio, called from New York and insisted that Jack rehire the quartet. Jack stood his ground and in no uncertain terms said, But. <laughs> but. But, but I know, but. But Mr. Riggio, I, I had to fire them. I mean, that, that quartet was driving me. That quartet was. That quartet, that quart, <laughs> that quart. Count me in, Jackson. Quiet. <laughs> Phil, I'm talking to my sponsor. But, but Mr. Riggio, if you knew what I went through with those boys, you'd. I know, but I, but I, I, I. Take back your rumba. I. Your samba. I marry. <laughs> Now, Mr. Riggio, I know how you feel about the quartet. I know you want them back. But I don't quite agree with you, so I'll have to think it over. What? I thought it over. Yes. Look how white he is. Well, all right, Mr. Riggio. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Hmm. Mr. Riggio thinks he can frighten me. He's mistaken. He didn't frighten you, huh? Of course not. I know my rights, Mary. I got a contract to work for Lucky Strike for three full years, and he can't tell me what to do about the quartet. I remember Clause 8 about picking talent. Don't forget Clause 9 about picking tobacco. <laughs> what? And you ain't gonna look so cute in that old straw hat, Buster. Phil. L-S-F-E Boone, L-S-F-E Boone. Now look. Yes, sir. You bet. Why, sure. I've been smoking Lucky Strike for nigh on a 3,000 year. Damn it. <laughs> Dennis. Now, wait a minute, Mary. Now, are you sure about that tobacco-picking clause in my contract? Well, certainly. Hey, Jackson, don't you read a contract before you sign it? Well, I usually do, but when we started dickering about salary, we got into an argument. My sponsor jumped out of his chair, and then he accidentally stepped on my glasses. What do you mean, accident? You were wearing them at the time. <laughs> well, look, kids, I made up my mind not to take back that quartet. Hand me that phone. I'm going to call up my sponsor and tell it's him... It's long distance. Hand me that pen. I'm going to write my sponsor. <laughs> and I'm going to tell him that I've been offered another job at twice this salary. Oh, Jack, how can you say such a thing when it isn't true? And it's only 10 days after George Washington's birthday. Gee, you're, you're right, Mary. I, I mustn't tell a lie. You know, Jackson, I had an experience once like George Washington. Phil. One look. day when I was a kid, I took an axe and cut down my father's favorite magnolia tree. You mean cherry tree? I'm from the South, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. When my father came home and saw the tree cut down, he took me by the hand, led me into the living room, stood me in front of George Washington's picture and said, Son, who chopped down that magnolia tree? I said, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I did. And he beat my brains out. (laughs) 
What? So go be president. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell the truth no matter what happens, and I'm still not going to rehire that quartet. But, Jack, if you get fired, what'll happen to us? I'll have to go back to my old job. Oh, don't worry, Mary. You'll still be working for me. Holy smoke, do you own the May Company, too? <laughs> well. Gee, May Benny. <laughs> Now, stop. Now, cut it out. This is serious. I'll say it is, Jack. If you, you lose your job, we don't work. And if we don't work, you don't eat. I don't eat. Take the line, if we don't work, we don't eat. Don, you I'm not worried about. You could lose 20 pounds a day, live to be 108, and they'd still have to bury you in a Quonset hut. <laughs> so go be president. I mean, go sit down. Now, Dennis, Dennis, it's time for your song. Come on, let's have it. Okay. My uncle lives in a Quonset hut. He does? Yeah. All right, Dennis, your uncle lives in a Quonset hut. What's the joke? No joke, I just thought you'd be interested. <laughs> Dennis, don't waste time with idle conversation. Now, let's have your song. His uncle lives in a Quonset hut. But I do, sung by Dennis Day. And now, and now. And now what? I don't know, Mary. This, this quartet thing sure has me worried. You didn't even compliment me on my song. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It was very good. Then why are you sorry? <laughs> Dennis, he didn't mean that. Jack's very upset. This isn't the first time he forgot to compliment me. What? He hates me because my uncle lives in a Quonset hut. <laughs> Dennis, don't be silly. Nobody hates you. And, hey, wait a minute, Dennis. Wait a minute, maybe you could help me. Huh? Well, you sing, and if you could get three other singers, I mean, we could form a quartet. I have two brothers that sing. Say, that makes three. See, if you only had another brother. Well, I could talk to my parents, but I'm... I don't mean that. <laughs> anyway, I've... I don't know, I've got to think of something. You know, Jack, before I became an announcer, I was a singer. I know, Don, but I need a quartet. Quartet? <laughs> what do 
are you laughing at? If Don had a mouth over each one of his chins, you'd have the whole Johnson Choir. <laughs> Mary, this is no time for jokes or remarks like that, either. But maybe I could form a quartet out of my cast. Now, Mary, I know that you sing, and Dennis sings, and... Now, Phil, he's a very good singer, too. That's my boss who said that. <laughs> so maybe we could... Love say... that man. Phil. He maybe... said it, and I'm glad. <laughs> Look, Phil, this must lead into a routine. I haven't got time. So let's drop it. Now, look, now, the four of you can sing, so I'll have a quartet after all. That's no good, Mr. Benny. You have to have a male quartet, and one of us is a girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guess which one. <laughs> I know, Dennis, I know. Believe me. <laughs> I'm sure of one thing. I'm not going to... I'm not going to apologize. I'm, I'm not going to apologize to the sportsman even if I do have to pick tobacco. Don't you worry about it, Jackson. Phil G ain't gonna let that happen to you. What? I got my own show. You can come to work for me. You know, I may have to at that. Say, Phil, if I did go on your show, uh, I mean, what would you pay me? The same thing you pay me. <laughs> Why, you no good, cheap, chiseling hand. <laughs> Are you crazy? But, Jackson, money isn't everything. You said that yourself. When? When the blue of the night met the gold in your vault. <laughs> I didn't ask you. Anyway, Phil, I don't want to be on your show. But, Jackson, look what you could learn just by sitting there and watching me. <laughs> me? Learn from you? Sure. My stuff is sharp. It's right up to the minute. Now, ask me something, Jackson. Ask me, uh, ask me what happened to the kid who swallowed a live duck. Phil, I'm not going Come into... on, Jackson. Just once ask me. Now ask me what happened to the kid that swallowed a live duck. Oh, all right, Phil. What happened to the kid that swallowed a live duck? He felt a little down in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, your head may come to a point, but nobody's getting stuck with it. <laughs> uh... Phil, why don't you stick your head in a pencil sharpener and get a haircut? <laughs> Now, Don, Don, I think it's time for a commercial, so let's have it. Oh, Jack, I can't do a commercial. My heart won't be in it without the quartet. Don. Don Wilson. Twinkle Tummy. <laughs> Don, you're supposed to do a commercial right here and now, and you're going to do it. All right, but the way I feel, it won't sound right. Oh, stop acting like a kid and do it. Okay. L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T. Lucky strikes are surround, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. And they're made of that light that find the naturally mild tobacco. And even though I love them, that's all I'm going to say. So there. John, stop pouting. Look at the way your lower lip sticks out. What a place to open beer bottles. <laughs> you said it. Between Don, the quartet, and the sponsor, I just soon quit radio and forget about the whole thing. No, well, Jack, if you're so disgusted, why don't you quit? Look, Mary, if I got the right offer from pictures, I'd consider it, believe me. I'm sorry now I turned down that big part they offered me in the Jolson story. Oh, some big part. When Jolson sang Mammy, you were supposed to run out and put a cushion under his knee. <laughs> Not the part I'm talking about. Mary, why don't you stop kidding when I'm so worried? Well, Jack, if you're so worried about the quartet, why don't you apologize to them and get the back? Look, Mary, I can't humiliate myself that way. I have too much pride. Well, you know what your sponsor said. If you don't get them back, you'll have no job, and no job means no salary. Well, maybe you're right. I'll go find the quartet and apologize. Wait a minute, Jackson. What about your pride, your dignity? Let Rod and Coleman have dignity. I need a new suit. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, you go with me. Phil, you, Don, and Dennis can finish the program. I can finish it myself. You sure can. <laughs> come on, Mary. Come on. All right. You know, Mary, this is going to be a mighty hard thing for me to do, but you're right. It's the only way to... Oh, Mr. Benny! Hey, Mr. Benny! Jack, the doorman's calling you. Oh. What is it, Pete? Top of the morning to you, Mr. Benny. A telegram came for you while you were broadcasting, and I didn't want to be disturbing you. That's all right. Hand me the telegram. Oh, I say, old fellow, a message came for you while you were broadcasting over the wireless. I didn't want to interfere with your proceedings, oh, pip, pip. <laughs> look, look, will you please hand me the press... Senator Benny, for you came a telegram while you was broadcasting on the radio, I think, and I didn't want... Stop auditioning and give me that telegram! <laughs> yes, sir. Here. Thanks. He hasn't got enough shows. He wants to be on mine, too. <laughs> Mel Blanc. Mary, you read the telegram to me. 
I don't want my fans to see me with glasses on. Sort of destroys an illusion, you know. Okay. Why, Jack, it's from Fred Allen. Fred Allen? Yeah, he says, uh, Dear Jack, I heard you stand up for your rights and talk back to your sponsors, and I certainly admire your courage and integrity. Well. And Jack, if you lose your job, don't worry, as here in New York, there's a splendid opening for you. All we have to do is lift up the manhole cover. <laughs> well, isn't that nice? He wants me to live with him. <laughs> There's Rochester waiting in the car. Hello, Rochester. Well, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Rochester. Uh, Rochester, I want you to drive us to North Hollywood in a hurry. Mary, get in the car. Just a minute, Jack. What are you looking at? That right front hubcap. Did that come with this car? Oh, no, ma'am. That's off a 1947 Cadillac. Really? Where'd you get it? Well, yesterday, Mr. Benny and I were walking down the street. Look. A uh, new Cadillac came around the corner real fast, hit the curb, the hubcap flew up in the air, Mr. Benny made a running catch, laddered it to me, and I took off like Buddy Young in the Rose Bowl. Come on, Mary, get in the car. Okay. She's got backbones and butter beans, ham, hocks, and turnip greens. You and me in New Orleans, and that's what I like about Rochester, the Rochester, turn that Did off. I tell you about the place called Dua Diddy? It ain't no sir. Mary, next time don't slam the door so hard It turns on the radio You know, I feel sorry for the South First the bold weevil, now Phil Harris I don't know which is the worst of the two weevils <laughs> That was a good one, boss Oh, Rochester, do you really like that? No, but tomorrow's paid in I don't want to have another duel in the sun <laughs> Now, come on, Rochester, start the car. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Try it again, Rochester. Okay. Rochester, what's wrong with the motor? Everything, including B.O. <laughs> well, roll down the window and try it again. <laughs> ah. 
that's better. I threw a cough drop in the gas tank. <laughs> now, uh, Rochester, drive us out to North Hollywood. Yes, sir. Rochester, did you hear my program? No, boss. I was busy fixing the car. Why? What happened? When I wanted to turn on the radio, I slammed the door and the fender fell off. Which fender? The fender. <laughs> the fender. Oh, well, the next time you slam the door, be a little more... Rochester, what was that? We just terminated our association with the Cadillac Motor Company. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, the hubcap. Oh, Jack, when are you going to get rid of this car? I don't know. I'm thinking of holding an auction at Santa Anita. <laughs> Why don't you get one of those new cars with a hydromatic drive? You know, the ones that have no clutch. Oh, we're way ahead of them. We got no clutch, no brake, no nothing. <laughs> Rochester. If Nora Prentice ever rode in this car, she'd say plenty. <laughs> Look, just keep driving, will you? Say, Rochester, if this car has no brake, how do you stop it? There's a hole in the floorboard, and I wear spiked shoes. <laughs> well, better start dragging them. There's a red light. Oh, Martha. Martha. What is it, Emily? There's Jack Benny again. Oh, yes. My, but he's handsome. Every time I see him, my stockings begin to crawl. <laughs> Oh, Martha, you're acting like a silly girl. Oh, don't be such a prude, Emily. You will have to admit that Mr. Benny is one of the most romantic men in Hollywood. Well, maybe so, but I'm still loyal to Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Emily, two weeks ago was Mr. Benny's birthday, so I... Oh, no, Emily, you'll think I'm silly. No, no, Martha, tell me. I sent him a lock of my hair. Oh, Martha, do you think he received it? He must have. Look, he's wearing it. <laughs> oh, Emily, I think Mr. Benny is looking at us. So he is. Oh, darn it. I wish I'd worn my bare midriff. <laughs> Rochester, the lights change. You can go. Well, here we are, Mary. Gee, I hate to go in there and apologize to the quartet. Oh, Jack, it's nothing. It'll all be over in a few minutes. I know, but how can you talk to them? All they do is hum and sing. Oh, come on. Let's get it over with. All right, here's the door. Says the sportsman. Well, go ahead and ring the bell. Okay. Bong, 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 bong. Hmm. Hello, fellas. Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. <laughs> Jack, we're here already. Go through with it. Oh, all right. Now, fellas, I came here to talk to you about your job. I want to tell you that I'm very sorry that I fired you last week. I know I was hasty, but... but Here we go again. Mary, keep out of this. Now, look, fellas, I want you to come back to my show. How about it? Sooner or later, we knew you'd be coming around to get us. But to get us, you must let us make much more dough. More dough? Sooner or later, you'll pay us the money we want. We betcha. And we betcha that we get ya before you go. But, fellas, I'm paying you a lot now. I mean, how much do you want? Give us 500 more, only 500 more, and the contract you have and you hold. But, fellas, you've got a contract for three more weeks. How much longer do you want it to run? Till the end of time Long as stars are in the blue Long as there's a spring and birds to sing We'll go on singing just for you Well, I'm not going to give you a long contract And that settles it Then thanks for the memory Of LSMFT The smoke for you and me So round, so firm, so fully packed So easy on the dream Oh, thank you so Look, fellas, why don't you listen to reason? Thanks for the memory of shows we used to do, and they were all with you. But if you're such a dope, we'll work for Hope or Fitch and Poo. Oh, thank you so much. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it, I've been in radio 15 years. I never had a quartet before, and I don't need one now. So good night. Good night, sweetheart. We won't meet you Now tomorrow. cut that out. 
and goodbye. Come on, Mary. Well, Mary, I tried. I apologize, but did they listen? No. And I got to get them back. I don't know what to do. What'll I do? What do they do on a rainy night in oh, Rio? Oh, quiet. <laughs> I'll think of some way to get them back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as a result of the last war, no country entered peacetime reconstruction and rehabilitation with scantier resources than Greece. Here is another opportunity to share our blessings with our suffering neighbors overseas. The present drive on behalf of the Greek War Relief Association, a nonprofit organization, is under the chairmanship of Herbert Hoover and includes men and women of every nation and creed. To give aid, contact your local Greek War Relief Association or the Greek War Relief Association, New York 19, New York. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, here is my good friend, Basil Rysdale. As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember... L-S-M-F-T. That's the fair say I'm not a bit of a bit of a bit American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. When it comes to tobacco, Mr. Sidney Curran of Oxford, North Carolina, speaks with authority because for 25 years he's been an independent tobacco expert. Here's what he said. At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy tobacco that's got real quality. Good, fine tobacco that smokes up mild, cool, and fragrant. I've smoked Luckers myself for 26 years. Independent tobacco experts like Mr. Curran are right on the spot at the auctions, where they can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. Remember, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, year in, year out. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. I'm sorry, Mr. Riggio, but I did all I could. I went to the quartet and I apologized to them. Now, just a minute, Mr. Riggio. I've listened to you long enough. Now, you listen to me. If they want to come back, they can come back. And if they don't want it, it's all right with me. And that settles it. Goodbye. How does that sound, Mary? Fine. Now, let's get to a telephone and call them up. <laughs> tomorrow, Mary, tomorrow. Good night, folks. <laughs> This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>